The AEW world title was vacated on Dynamite, plus CM Punk, the Young Bucks, and Kenny Omega were removed from the Dynamite opening, and new champions were crowned on Dynamite as well. It's all in the wrestling news right now. Mere hours before Dynamite last night, uh, we got word of prominent members of the roster being suspended, EVPs no less, and a major injury to CM Punk. Fraser and I covered this in a news video at silly o'clock last night. Uh, we had the fallout from All Out on Dynamite last night. Uh, what's the situation currently, Andrew? So Dynamite opened with Tony Khan announcing that AEW world title had indeed been vacated with a new champion to be decided in a tournament that concludes at AEW Dynamite Grand Slam. It was also announced as well that the World Trios Championships had been vacated and new champions would also be crowned in the opening match. Now, there was no mention of CM Punk or all the Young Bucks or Kenny Omega with all four of them were just absolutely, as you said, removed from the AW Dynamite opening titles. Uh, the first match of the night, we saw Death Triangle defeat the best friends to become the new trios champions in a belter of a match as well. Mm, it was a and then later last night too, Brian Danielson advanced to the semi-finals of the world title tournament due to face Chris Jericho next week. And the tournament will continue this Friday with Sammy Guevara and Darby Allen on, uh, on Rampage. Now, uh, on. Rampage were taped after Dynamite. Uh, yes. We'll have the spoilers for that at the very end of this video. So if you don't want those, little heads up for you, but we know who Moxley will be competing against next week. And we'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, first off, uh, where there's chaos, there's opportunity. Jordy Pack, now a two, a double champion two in AEW. He's, He's now two pack. Hey! hey! Just made that up on the top of our heads. <laughs> uh, so one pack doing it for, for Newcastle League. Uh, first of all, uh, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, let's touch on that. Yeah. Um, what longer term implications uh, do we think this suspension for the EVPs has? Well, I mean, obviously, I, I feel like it was the right thing to take them off the intro. I think this needs to feel, with everything that's happened, I think it needs to feel consequential. Uh, it needs to feel, because I think in the in the press of Tony Khan, were, it didn't come off brilliantly. I don't think it came off brilliantly as the owner and the leader of a company. Um, Came across more of a nodding dog at points. Uh, yeah, really oh, did. Yes. Like, really did. In in terms of like, what what precedent does that set for the rest of the locker room? If you know someone, your so called top star is absolutely berating lots of your other employees and you're just sat there not saying anything and nodding. It just, it felt like a bad look. I think that's something that hasn't really been addressed as much as the comments. You know, there's been a lot to dive yeah. into, but you're absolutely right. I mm. think that, you know, Tony Khan not stepping in there and going, well, hang on a minute, let's, this isn't for now. Yes. Like, I mean, yeah, obviously, obviously hindsight is 2020. Of course, of hindsight's course. Hindsight's 20. It's easy to say what to do either after the fact or when you're watching it at home. Yeah. I get that. In the heat of the moment, we all do different things. I'd like to think though, that if that had happened on uh, another watch with another company, yes, uh, the, whoever was in charge, they might have gone, maybe this isn't the time to discuss this. Let's put a pin in this yeah. and let's move on. Let's talk about this after. Maybe. But yeah, the, the, the I think that that itself sets a precedent, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. So I feel like Tony Khan sort of maybe has to make up for such things happening as well by being like, no, this is, we are doing this. You're being taken off this. Your titles are being vacated. Like I'm actually... Setting a point, I'm, I'm setting something down here to mm. like feel serious and, and you know, this is what could happen if this happens once again within the company. Now, CM Punk, we know that a uh, serious injury, as Fraser and I discussed last night, has uh, taken him off the table. Mm. Uh, he's a two-time champion with five days as champion. I mm -hmm. think that was the statistic that I saw yesterday, which wow. is an unusual one. Um, but is this the end? And I'll ask you what I asked Fraser last night. Is yep. this the end? of CM Punk full-time in AEW? I'm not I'm not too sure. Obviously, we heard the uh, rumblings about the, uh, Tony Khan and CM Punk having a, a meeting about everything as well. And that I don't, because I feel like CM Punk's obviously a huge draw for AEW and for Tony Khan as well. You know, in the, in the press of Tony Khan called him a sweetheart and he's helped him with a lot of stuff. But like, part of me feels as though, you know, is, is Punk also worth all this hassle that's coming along with it at the same time? Um, we've heard about how divided the backstage area is and um, like, is 
is it really is it really worth it for the um, for the for the good of the backstage locker for the good of morale just for the good of the company as a whole like you know obviously we're not there backstage knowing what specifically is going down but i think you probably have to ask yourself the question if you were tony khan after a while like is it necessarily worth it money wise absolutely but to is it to the detriment of everything else within your company and just before you make like an aggressive anti-circus uh and anti-circus goer and go for the juggler right um want to point that this is something that's being said by andrew who is a massive cm punk fan i was wearing his t-shirt last wear night his, when I, get, yeah. I wear like honestly it's I this think isn't we coming from all. somebody with an agenda no, against CM Punk. Like, I love what CM Punk brings in ring. Yeah. I think the stuff, we did a whole video about his first year. Mm. I think the stuff that CM Punk did with MJF is some of the best storytelling in wrestling in a long time. How excited were we last year when he came so out? We excited. were so excited and we were so excited for wrestling just to be reinvigorated again. And it certainly was when he came back. But I think you have to look at, at what's on the table at the moment and you kind of have to look at it logically as well. Exactly, exactly. And again, it comes from people who love the work that CM mm. Punk does. But you ask the question, as you said, I'm with you. Is it worth it? Is yeah. it worth all the hassle? Is it worth all the hassle? Time will tell. Uh, now, in amongst all of the, the title shenanigans from last night on Dynamite, uh, we had a new champion crowned in amongst all of it. Uh, Daniel Garcia is your brand new ROH Pure Champion, defeating Huila Utah uh, in a, another banger of a match that saw Garcia getting the hometown win. He's a New York boy. So New over. York City boy. <laughs> <laughs> have a title uh, the dragon tamer got the tap win and then we had a wonderful moment with, with Brian Danielson down there mm. putting the belt around him and Chris Jericho watching uh, as they're watching from the distance a bit like a very jealous girlfriend that's his own him. fault he said he wasn't going to be there by the side of Garcia he said, was like I know you're going to win but guess what I'm not going to be there by your side because you weren't f there for me at all at all now, the Daniel Garcia story um, being courted by a wrestler and a sports entertainer is really well woven. Mm. Where do you see Garcia's loyalties lying in a storyline perspective? I think like, the guy's so over right now and then just winning the pure championship as well. I feel like he is going to align himself with his hero in uh, Brian Danielson. What do you think? I can see him going towards Brian Danielson. Yeah. I can see this being um, uh, a a real bone of contention for Chris Jericho to not win somebody over as a sports entertainer. Yeah. Uh, and I can see Daniel Garcia join, maybe even joining Blackpool Combat Club. <gasps> I mean... But well, you have a lovely story that you could potentially tell here. You certainly with, do. With, with Wheelie Utah in there as well. Yeah, I mean, there's got there's got to be some sort of... I feel like with the tournament happening as well and, and the names involved in the AW World Title Tournament, I feel like there could very well sort of be seeds planted for there to be dissension within the the Blackpool Combat Club Ooh. and some tension. I think that could be really, I think it could be done really well. And then you'd get phenomenal matches out of that though as well, wouldn't you? Mm, you would, a bit of dissension, yes. smellness. Uh, Tony Khan on Sunday gave us an update on the status of ROH, uh, easily forgotten in amongst all the chaos of yeah. the weekend. Um, but he said, I don't have anything to announce. All right. It's something we're still working on and actively excited about. And where that could live and where it might live, I don't know yet. Because so Ring of Honor, for the time being, still kind of incorporated within AEW. Mm. Are we in need at this point, Andrew, in your opinion, to have Ring of Honor pull away? Or are you quite happy with the, the levels of synergy that we're seeing between AEW and Ring of Honor? I think... I the, I'm on I'm on both sides of the fence here because mm -hmm. when you have like such your compelling... Your bottom must be very sore. It's, very, it's always very sore. Um, when you have compelling storylines like what's happening within the Blackpool Combat Club at the moment and you have phenomenal champions and you get phenomenal matches out of that, I think it does really well for Ring of Honor's image to have these superstars and hopefully they go on to sort of define what Ring of Honor becomes as well when we finally do split off. But at the same time, you have the other titles, unfortunately, like the, the Ring of Honor TV Championship with Samoa Joe, who we know was off doing all this filming with everybody. And we have Ring of Honor Women's Champion Mercedes Martinez, who was like defending it on AEW Dark and the uh, FTR, who were the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions. And, and sometimes it feels like things are split in all different directions and there's nothing of consistency apart from within perhaps what's happening with the Blackpool Combat Club at the moment. Mm. And like, 
the stuff there is very, very good, but then everything else I feel like gets lost in the shuffle and it does feel sort of all, everything is scattered and nothing feels super consequential, maybe outside of the Ring of Honor World Tag Team, uh, sorry, the Ring of Honor World Championship and the Pure Championship too, with all the matches that we're having. So I think it definitely needs to before storylines get Absolutely. I mean, it's getting quite convoluted as, as already, trying to keep up with how many how many storylines are going on within AEW. Um, so I think to sort of separate that, it would be very nice to finally break away. And then we can just manage everything. If you want to watch Ring of Honor, you can, because everything's over there. If you want to watch AEW, you can, because everything's over here. Nice I'm and consolidated. I'm excited bit. for the creative that we'll get once we've got that very deliberate divide mm. and we can have a really strong Ring of Honor product, which I think we will do in Ring. Yeah. I think it'll be accepted once it's its own uh, body of work and then once we have a more you know and I know you get bored of me talking about the size of the AEW roster you get it but when but but I genuinely think Ring of uh, AEW with a more streamlined roster yeah. would be a really focused uh, engaging wrestling product more so mm. than it is now so I'm that's why I'm excited for this split to happen because I think you're going to get two very very exciting but different wrestling properties from the same house mm. I think that's a cool thing to have um, now Rampage was taped last night after Dynamite you might not want spoilers for Rampage and that's super cool it's at that point that we wish you a good day and say keys keys love you bye Sick, sick. Now, Rampage happened last night. Mm. And we know who's going to be facing uh, John Moxley in the next round of the Grand Slam title tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, but talk us through what happened on Rampage last night. So, yes. What are you again? Rampage spoilers. So, Samoa Joe returned and had a confrontation with Mark Sterling, Tony Nese, and Josh Woods, leading to a match between Woods and Joe. <laughs> being set for next week's Rampage. I'm very Beefy excited boys. about that. That is going to be amazing. Um, Claudio Castagnoli retained the Ring of Honor Championship against Dax Harwood too, which I imagine is going to be a tremendous match between mm. two phenomenal wrestlers. We also had Sammy Guevara pinning Darby Allen to advance in the Ooh. AEW Championship tournament. So Guevara is going to face John Moxley in the semi-finals. I like these matchups. Like mm. something's a, a little bit different, a little bit maybe less uh, predictable. Maybe, because I think we see Darby sort of go on to these things and then be the massive underdog and perhaps not pick up the win, but I'm kind of I'm kind of all for Sammy Guevara and John Moxley to have a little tiff. That'd I'm be quite a fun, excited about that. That'd be a fun yeah. little time. I mean, we'll, we'll go through, I mean, a bit closer to the time. We'll kind of have a little ponder on who we think uh, should take the, uh, the the title at the end of this Grand Slam tournament, but a very interesting tournament. And thank goodness... They haven't done the interim nonsense again. Yes. Thank goodness. Woo. Thank goodness. We'll have more wrestling news throughout the day because because that's all there ever is now at cultaholic.com. Case, case. Love you, bye.